Hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Wise Oceans. We'll just give people a couple of minutes to uh, to log in and join us. And whilst I'm doing that, um, I'm just going to set my page up so I can see because I don't always see the comments when on the page they give me, which is annoying. <laughs> um, uh, Ah, we've got another Charlotte says, hi, ladies. So that's three, because I should say Charlie is really a Charlotte, but we're just Charlie. <laughs> so, and we've just got a, a comment from Charlotte Ringrose who says, hi, ladies. So <laughs> it's all the it. Charlotte. All the Charlotte's <laughs> joining. I love it. Come, come, come and join us. <laughs> yeah, it's the best name. Obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah. There was never any Charlotte's when I was a kid, because I'm quite old. Um, uh, and then suddenly... There were quite a lot of Charlottes and it was very confusing because I was not used to answering, you know, somebody shouted Charlotte. It was always me because I yeah. was always the only Charlotte. And, and then it was like, oh, these are other Charlottes. Yeah, I actually, uh, oh, there's a lot Gary of Charlottes. Says, there's a lot of Charlottes um, where I'm working at the moment. And so I thought, OK, I'll be different. I'll be Charlie. But now there's <laughs> loads of Charlies, too. So I can't win. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, when I when I first went to Seychelles, there was uh, it, there was only like 20 of us and there were three Charlottes. So. <laughs> perfect <laughs> yeah. um, and and two lees and um three somebody it was like a crazy amount of similar <laughs> names it was um, Love it. anyway <laughs> chatting away good evening everyone um thank you uh thanks everyone for joining uh, us today um to our, on our regular interview with wise oceans if you've not been on one of these before, this is uh, an extension of what we have on our website where we've got a huge number, I think approaching 170 or so, interviews with people across the marine conservation, marine science world, talking about their careers, sharing their advice. And uh, we bring this onto our Facebook Live now. And um, today we're really, really excited to welcome uh, Charlie Young. Uh, who uh, works for uh, with uh, Blue Ventures, but is also the founder of Saltwater Britain. She's had a rich and varied career uh, in um, marine biology and research, uh, and you know has kind of gone down that wiggly road and found um, found the place where she's super happy. And a really, really exciting initiative uh, program that she's got called Saltwater Britain. We're going to hear loads about it. I want to know more about it. I was looking at it this afternoon going, this looks amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so uh, welcome, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Um, I'm super excited to be here. And also, I just love that we're both mutually called Charlotte. I you know. It's just the Charlotte gang today. <laughs> the Charlotte gang. <laughs> uh, anybody who's not called Charlotte could just go. Well, no, please, <laughs> and if um, this is an inclusive space for all. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I always just start off. Uh, I mean, I've, I've given you a very quick introduction mm. there, but I, for the benefit of our viewers today, um, perhaps tell us a little bit more about yourself and the kind of journey you went from. We have a lot of people who want to do what you want to do. So it's, I think yeah. it's really helpful that they can have. Um, and what we try to do is to share all the various routes that you can get to mm -hmm. cool places that like, you, like you're at. OK, so. I'll start at the beginning then. <laughs> Sorry if this is a bit of a long story, everyone. It is definitely this the bit does. where you're forced to wear a wetsuit? Because I read that in your bio. I was yes. like, poor child. <laughs> yes, poor child. I mean, so um, as you've introduced me, my name's Charlie. Uh, whenever anyone asks me what I am or what I do, I feel like there's so many different titles. So background in marine science, but I'm also a presenter. I would also say I'm a diver, expedition leader, a kind of magical mix of lots of different things. And of course, a science communicator. Um, and that's what I've landed up doing now alongside the expedition leading. But um, you wouldn't know, but I'm originally from Pembrokeshire. So <laughs> I've lost all all of my Welsh accent, no Welsh accent left whatsoever. What a great place for marine life. Yes, very great place for marine life. Uh, so yeah, I'm from Pembrokeshire. And as mentioned in my bio on my website, I was forced to grow up in a wetsuit. Um, my dad was a keen diver and my mum, a huge lover of the ocean and combined right. that just meant 
being forced into the That's ocean the every weekend. That is the law. You <laughs> must be in a wetsuit and you must be covered in sand and in the sea. So <laughs> a little bit cold. And very cold. <laughs> but ice cream at the end of it. So it kind of, you know, swings, swings and roundabouts. Um, and so yeah, I then was extracted, as I explained, from Pembrokeshire at the age of 12 and moved to the Canary Islands where I spent six, seven blissful years growing up there, very idyllic life. I mean, just the most incredible place. And again, my passion for the ocean grew, but I, at the time I didn't really know. I just had this, you know, desire to work with, you know, <clears throat> wildlife in the natural world. I just, I guess I was a bit greedy and I wanted to do, to do everything. And so I decided to go to uni and do a broader topic. So I went and actually did conservation biology and I did that at Bristol UE. And it was an incredible course that taught me the fundamentals of conservation and conserving species, both, you know, kind of small scale and then, you know, more regionally or internationally. And it was there that I really learned or, or, or realized that my calling was the ocean. And so after I finished um, that degree, I went off to Australia and worked as a research assistant for a little while. So. I did my dissertation on microplastic pollution and oh, then luckily, tiny. yes, and it was around the time when it was all starting to kick off. So I graduated in 2015. So I started that research in 2014 and that was when it was still a bit microplastics. What is this? Um, and I then went out to Australia and continued this work and worked as a research assistant out there for a year. Then at the time I was looking to try and do a PhD but what I soon realized is that to get a PhD um, a lot of people want you to have a publication or to have a master's so I made the decision to come back to the UK and do a master's by research at Glasgow University and that's when I really got my specialty in marine science so I did a a quite a, a looking back on it it was a baptism of fire so my project <laughs> was looking at the efflux of carbon so the movement of carbon at the air sea surface interface over coral reef systems so oh, okay. you know coral reefs impact the carbonic chemistry of the water surrounding water column over the course of a day and this can then change you know our oceans do us a fantastic favor in actually absorbing a lot of that carbon but depending on the amount of carbon in the water column that can change the amount that's being absorbed or, or that's being pushed back out so you know there's research that suggests that coral reefs could actually be a source of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere because the amount of calcification and other processes going on um, and so I say a baptism of fire because that was like, boom, biogeochemistry. Here you are, learn all this new stuff. Read these I, 10 books. Yes, read these 10 books. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Um, and I became a mother of corals. I kept corals, I had 26 tanks and no flow through system. So all manual water changing. I'm surprised I've got any hair left and that I don't look about, you know, hundred years old because it was a very stressful, but yeah, you know, oh, I think, Brilliant though. Brilliant. I mean, you I mean, I go on about corals a lot. Yes. People, uh, regular viewers will know. Yes. <laughs> so um, I did, I finished my master's and yeah. then I had an incredible opportunity kind of fall out of the sky. Um, a connection I'd made in Australia uh, with a researcher out there put me in touch with this expedition team that were going to Indonesia and they needed a scientist to come on board and to sample for plastic and this was my first introduction of you know kind of scientific expeditions and science communication and then this is where it's all branched from there so I went on it was run by Ocean Geographic and it was called the Elysium Expedition and I joined um, a number of videographers Nat Geo photographers and scientists from around the world and we went to Rajarampat and we essentially sailed around for 16 days and I, I was my job liking you <laughs> get off <laughs> I'm joking I know wow, that I, sounds amazing yes it was incredible and I got to present a documentary on my work and this documentary got um chosen for the Melbourne Zoo um outdoor festival alongside Chasing Coral and other amazing Whoa. uh documentaries couldn't quite believe it I was quite shocked myself and um I'd also got presented at a four part symposium across Asia uh, because the whole idea about, about this expedition was to uh, show people the extent of plastic uh, pollution in this area, an area that's considered to be extremely pristine. And um, 
after that, I was like, oh, my word. I want to spend all my time on a boat, being a scientist, <laughs> going on expeditions to lovely places and communicating about it. And so that was the moment I was like, I'm going to do that. This is what I'm going to do. And after that, I then was lucky enough to land myself a position working out in Saudi Arabia. So I packed my bags and moved to Saudi Arabia, where I worked at a fantastic university called the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology as a research assistant. And basically, my job there was to assist with all of the Reef Ecology Center projects from uh, you know, the PhD students right through to the postdocs and academics. And my job essentially was to go and do coral transects, go and dive every day and assist. And it was just the most incredible year where I got so much hands-on experience, really, you know, extended my diving skills, scientific diving skills, and got to go on lots of scientific expeditions. Um, and then after that, for some reason, I decided to come back to the UK. <laughs> because <laughs> why wouldn't you? Did you get a lot um, of people go, why are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> a lot have of it all did. though, right? You can't have it all. But yeah. um you know, I came back for lots of good reasons and I'm very pleased that I have. Um, and essentially it really was to start building my science communication career. So I do quite a lot of presenting and I wanted to try and break into that world. Um, and to do that, I mean, Bristol is the main hub for wildlife film and photography. And so this is yep. the best place to do it. So I came back to lovely, drizzly England right at the time when coronavirus you know a couple oh of months goodness. before coronavirus hit and then it was like okay I am marooned in the UK and I can do nothing <laughs> and um I decided to try and make the best of my time and essentially something that I learned from going abroad and doing all of this work and what I've really focused my work on is assessing human impacts or understanding so my master's research was looking at this movement of carbon but that had you know, it referenced to global sort of like, um, or to climate change and understanding how, you know, regionally there are differences and then the plastic pollution as well. So I have this real fascination for human impacts in our oceans. And then going away and coming back, I've realized, especially when, you know, the XR um, protests were happening is that really, if, we, the big, if you wanna make an impact, the best place to do it is at home. And if we wanna solve the issues that our oceans face, we need to be making an impact on our own doorstep. And I realized that I've spent so much time traveling the world and going, oh my word, coral reefs are dying and it's horrible and feeling powerless. And I thought to myself, actually, the biggest impact I can probably make is at home. Yeah. So coming home, I decided uh, with all this time <laughs> that I had to think that I would start um, this initiative called Saltwater Britain. And it started as a passion campaign. So I use my social media as my own platform to communicate conservation issues and basically just nerd out about the ocean and try and galvanize change. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I launched Saltwater Britain last year, went on a number of expeditions to showcase the incredible marine habitats and wildlife that we have. And it was a massive hit. And then I thought, okay, this year, let's start taking people on expeditions. And I started to organize my own. And at the time had just started a job at Blue Ventures as a communications coordinator. And that's where I am now. Um, and they, they have their own expeditions branch that unfortunately became dormant in the pandemic because yeah. all of their sites are Timor-Leste, Madagascar, and of course no one can get out there anymore. And so we were just chatting one day and they were like, hmm, UK expeditions. And they're like, <laughs> what you're doing looks good. And we want to build our, you know, our yeah. um our name here in the UK because Blue Ventures is um the, one of the largest or the largest yeah. marine conservation charity in the UK, but not many people know about them because no, all of the work Sort of is in tropical fisheries across the world but um actually they're you know an incredible organization and so yeah brilliant then we just kind of thought should we you know should we just, just team up <laughs> <laughs> like yeah let's do it so saltwater britain was born and now it's this beautiful partnership um between i and um blue ventures and i couldn't think of anyone better or a better organization to be doing it with really you know no, they are perfect Got an all incredible that experience in in the expeditions yeah. they've run and and the work that they do i truly think absolutely. that blue ventures are kind of hitting the nail on the head when it comes to marine conservation that yeah. doing things 
that you know trying to conserve our oceans but with people because people are ultimately the ones that we need to manage when it comes to that interaction we we are causing the impacts and so it's as much about working with communities who have that you know have the right to be there a lot of people around the world obviously depend on our oceans as their main source of protein and you can't turn around and say go away yeah. leave us alone you can't and you shouldn't western savior oh gosh don't even get me started <laughs> and so that's a very 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 long-winded story about where i am and so saltwater britain really? has now launched and so tell us a little more bit about more it. about saltwater britain what what can people you know what does it do yep. how can people get involved and and yeah so saltwater britain essentially our tagline is ocean adventures with impact so we want to breathe a new meaning into adventure we don't only want to take people out there to experience amazing wildlife and to see it for themselves and to build that connection and reconnect people to our oceans we also want to give them a chance to know that their money is going back into conservation and to also have that chance to learn skills there's such a hunger for that i think you know? i really think I so really too think a hunger. like why wouldn't you want to go Go on holiday and know that the money that you've spent going back into conservation and you might walk away from it having learned more about your seas and have skills that can actually empower you to do something personally I think that's a powerful mix and that's the idea behind it and so we have launched our first expedition which is going to be going to Pembrokeshire I uh, wonder why <laughs> we're going there <laughs> no one I know is from Pembrokeshire no, no. <laughs> Might see some angel sharks. Yeah, if we're lucky. I mean, yeah. they are so <laughs> difficult to see. I know. Um, but did you yeah. did you did you have uh, angel sharks when you were uh, out in? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, am I saying the wrong thing? <laughs> Not saying the wrong thing, but it's like a dagger to the heart because I, at the time, was probably just too interested in my social life to be going and hunting down oh. angel sharks, and now I kick myself because. <laughs> I, I've got a, um, a friend that I collaborated with on a Canary Island series, actually, and yeah, he's a massive angel shark advocate. And um, yeah, the the pictures he puts up and the videos, I'm like, like meters from the beach. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, well. oh well, I'll go back sometime. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I made you digress. No, that's fine. I'm sorry if I'm blabbering. I hope this is useful. No, 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 it's all good. I'm, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, these expeditions sound good. I need to say. <laughs> come. I, I think I will. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that sounds, I mean, like, yeah, if people want to know more, there's a website. There is a website, www.saltwaterbritain.org. Fantastic. Um, and uh, so, I mean, bringing this back to uh, sort of a careers -y type of thing i mean setting up something like that um uh what are the kind of things that you have to do what's a tip do i mean i don't suppose there is a typical day but maybe the range of things that you get to that that you have to do both maybe good and maybe a bit less glamorous <sighs> I mean, or setting up an organisation. At, <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, there is a lot of legwork in going to setting up an organisation like this. I mean, um, it's been definitely made much easier by the fact that Blue Ventures already had an established ex expeditions branch. They have, you know, the liability, the insurance, the yeah. risk assessments, the experience, everything in place. Because this is the thing: when you're taking people out to sea, and in general to do anything, you need to be risk assessments up to here insurance up to yeah. there and um just be so sure of all of your health and safety and that that really that that is a huge i think not a passion of anyone's really actually though i do know one person in this world who's incredibly passionate about it and hats off to him like i don't know how he's so passionate about it but he is um <laughs> keeping but, us all safe keeping us all safe but if i was to explain what a typical day in my life looks like right now in the role that i'm doing so um, I am in charge of scoping and organizing the expeditions. So looking for suitable sites, kind of dreaming up, thinking big blue sky thinking of like, where could we go? What can we do? I then I'm also in charge of building those collaborations between organizations. So looking at partners and people and local organizations that we can amplify and also, you know, get on board to collaborate with because there's lots of incredible organizations all around the UK. Um, and, you know, they're, they're each doing things in different pockets. So I'm I'm here to kind of build those connections and factor those into our trips. I also run all the socials. And so I 
I'm doing a lot of the digital side of things, you know, writing the itineraries, uh, collecting all of the visuals, um, writing the social media posts, orchestrating it basically yeah. with the help of an incredible team. I have to say, I've got um, Ryan and Martin who are my colleagues and they are just incredible and have a wealth of experience having worked for Blue Ventures Expeditions before and couldn't do it without them. Um, and so, you know, Martin's been building the website and uh, Ryan's also been doing all of the marketing. And then in general, they've just been, you know, we've been a dream team working together. So there's a lot of work that goes into Nobody does up. this on their own, do they? No. <laughs> and if they did, I would not believe them. <laughs> and and be shocked <laughs> is that as a lot of a lot of work um and then you've also got the customer service side of things so at the moment you know answering a lot of people's emails um liaising between teams you know finding out um simple things like departure times are there supermarkets nearby where can people hire kit from you know will can they you know dietary requirements all sorts of stuff so basically you know yeah, a lot of customer service too. Yeah. So yeah, well, it sounds like people are going to have a great time um, yes, doing what they do. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and one thing that struck me, um, kind of rewinding back to what you said when you were said uh, an amazing experience kind of came out of the blue. Mm. And I think it's really, um, I, I think for people watching this, is it's probably, this didn't really come out of the blue because I think, you know, you, you had, um it's all the preparation met opportunity kind yeah. of thing isn't it, it it's yeah. like all of that networking um and all of these incredible things that, mm. that happen happen mm. because you went to australia because you yes. got involved in this and you said yes to that and and i think for anybody watching this who's trying to forge a career is just mm -hmm. you know have a focus and have a direction but have say yes to stuff and <laughs> Do, yes. do stuff and stuff happens it's yeah. very basic but yeah, if I was to give anyone um, any advice on, you know, somebody who's maybe a career breaker, so they want to potentially, you know, move away from the profession that they're doing right now, want to move into this industry, or you're someone just starting out from scratch, um, showing initiative is... I think the biggest and most important thing that you can do it says so much about you. It does say so much about you from what it looks like on your CV and in your personal statement. You know, there's nothing harder than trying to write a personal statement. Um, and if you don't have anything to speak for it, if you haven't gone out there and shown initiative and shown this story of like why, why you're going here, it just does kind of look a bit odd to people. You know, if they read your personal statement and it comes across just not very personal or doesn't um yeah the same stuff everybody else has done yeah then it does then unfortunately it just doesn't make you stand up from the crowd and so yes like you say take every opportunity you can and go looking for them and don't be afraid to approach people because actually quite often you'll find that people are a lot more open and reciprocal for you speaking to them and yeah just be the maker of your own luck and networking is amazing like just it's a very network. small world isn't it <laughs> oh it's incredibly small um <laughs> and just yeah put yourself out there and also if you want to do something then just start doing it you know i i wanted to do expedition leading and i didn't wait for somebody to give me an opportunity apart from you know i was offered that great opportunity but when it came to stuff in the uk i just decided well i'm just going to do it yeah. um and so i think that yes be bold try to think outside of the box use your initiative network 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 ask for opportunities and take yeah. opportunities and just look and think outside of the box people are never offended to be asked if you know nope. if it's done in a nice yes. light way and um i think people will be surprised how how more frequently people might say yes or yeah. and how hard it is to find good people yes sometimes yeah yeah it is. <laughs> so if you are good get out there tell people yes get out there go to go to events like for example um I went to the RGS Explore Festival, which is Royal Geographical Society. They run this amazing festival for explorers. And I got to meet incredible people there. And I'd never done an expedition before, but just had this you know, desire to do expeditions. Um, and when, and off the back of it, I met somebody that runs Sail Britain or the founder of Sail Britain. Mm -hmm. And I'm now collaborating with him and been asked to be a guest host on his expeditions. So, you know, just by going in to that event and making that connection, um i was 
yeah an opportunity came up from it so it really is just take opportunities don't be afraid to put yourself out there um and just try and think outside of the box and try yeah. to get as much experience as you can as early on as you can when you're at uni <laughs> try to ignore your friends who want to go out and drink all the time it's hard <laughs> yeah, don't have We've a life there. don't have a life no but do like get involved with your stu- get involved with like student projects start your own project for example yeah. we started a green space project where we coordinated local volunteers to go off and um, clear a local shrub area in a woodland yeah. and i got you know the skills that you learn from like i mean huge organizing. skills it doesn't have to be a, yeah absolutely organizing any kind of community you know you have to yes you have to organize it you have to deal with people you have yep. to anticipate issues you have you know mm-hmm. so many things that you have to yeah we, we had a question actually from uh from nicole who knew yep. who knows blue ventures talked to us last semester uh great organization so that's great uh just done a thesis on whale sharks fantastic <gasps> excited to start my journey uh and was looking for advice i think this question came in as you were giving the advice so yep. i think um so the job market is incredibly competitive <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if but i, I think if you have advice, something to offer it's it yeah. narrow, it does narrow down doesn't it yeah i mean it's very much so for nicole just depending on what area you want to go into the job market is hugely saturated unfortunately um I think if you want to go into academia and you want to go into research, if you've got a thesis and you can publish it, get it published. Um, do you try to get it published? Because that is proof of your capacity to, to go on and actually be a researcher. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to do a PhD or you want to work in academia, then try your hardest to get it published. Uh, but if you're looking at trying to get into, I suppose, you know, working with conservation organizations, um yeah again you know if you're someone that like likes comms using your own social media that's always my portfolio you know i can show people what i what i do and that i've been successful in growing a following um it is just proof proof of the pudding basically um and then yeah just i know it's hard trying to earn money and then also trying to gain skills uh, at the same time is really really difficult uh but just any initiatives or projects that you can get involved with yeah that do make you uh stand out from the crowd is is i guess the way forward but yeah i don't yeah. i do not there's no simple answer is no, there? there's no simple answer and unfortunately this is the problem it's very any, but anything worthwhile is never you know whatever mm. um back there are lots there are lots of careers where it's tricky to get into but they're yeah. all the careers they're really you know and then you end up in a job that you do you know that's yeah. amazing and everybody says oh i'd love your job yeah but you know it's it's nothing, nothing worthwhile is easy for sure no no sure. Um, yeah. is there anything now that you wish you knew when you were younger that um you know sort of what would you tell your younger self perhaps apart from going to spend more time looking for angel sharks maybe <laughs> god no, yeah <laughs> sorry Every to bring night. it up again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real soft spot what would i tell myself um i guess that um I guess failure, that failure, or someone else's success is not your failure. I think for a long time, I got really, really hung up on what other people were doing and almost mirroring them or think, trying to sort of follow what they were doing. And that kind of meant that I wasn't, especially with the science communication. So, you know, I wanted to really try and sort of like build my following. And one thing I noticed is that, um, you know you have to if you want to be successful on social media you kind of need to show that you're your own person and you're an authentic voice Mm. and for a long time um i didn't think like that i would kind of like follow the crowd oh everyone's talking about this i'm going to talk about this too but actually people want to see personality and character um and i think the same goes (laughs) and you stand out and i think the same goes for the job market as well is that um you know think outside of the box a little bit and try to be your authentic self and just don't get hung up on what other people are doing because it does really Mm. it can really get to you and imposter syndrome is a massive thing and you know what just because someone else everyone's got it turns out 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone's got it. We've all got it. Even the successful people have got it. Even, you know, I have it now, even still, I'm like, oh, everybody's got it. Everyone's got it. I think when, when more people realize, every, you know, then maybe mm. that will take its power away. <laughs> yes. One thing, though, if you're pre-uni, so one thing that I would say that frustrated me is that there does seem to still be in the academic world a little bit of um snobbery I'm going to say it's snobbery about the university you go to so if you can go to a really good university do because unfortunately when you do come out of uni people do academics will look at the uni that you've been to and I didn't think that that would make an, uh, an impact but it did impact me getting a PhD um, and then also yeah uh, be prepared for the fact that when you come out of uni with a bachelor's degree it's not enough anymore you need to have more than a bachelor's degree you need to have experience and things under your belt because yeah. the job market what the one thing that frustrates me the most about it is that you'll be going for a entry-level job and it'll be like yes yeah, so we want you to be a junior research assistant and we want you to have worked for four years in the field as a research <laughs> assistant we want you to speak Bahasa What's Indonesia the world? you also be a dive master with at least over 400 dives under your belt have a boat license um also be uh the first person that's ever stepped foot on the moon and um, <laughs> you know just like all of these things and you're just sat there going but i've just graduated what am i supposed yeah. to do no, um exactly. so just get ahead of yourself do as much yeah. as you can we've had people who've got their bachelors gone off and got practical experience and then figured out what they want to do at masters we've had people mm -hmm. who've gone straight and done a master i don't think there's a right or a wrong way it depends where your head's at and what you know you want to do yeah. but um certainly yeah um uh some some combination of those of, mm. of the further degrees and practical experience mm -hmm. very much depends especially if there's any research or yeah. science involved for, for sure mm -hmm. Uh, okay, well, we 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 could chat all night, but we <laughs> yeah, I uh, we are coming to it. So, uh, my my standard couple of ending questions here, which um, are designed to um, to be hard, um, which is uh, your favorite marine creature. <laughs> oh, well, sorry, yeah, that's like trying to choose a favorite child. I thankfully don't have any children, but. Um, <laughs> Oh, so I have I have a load. I swear it's like every day it changes. But at the moment, well, I've got real, today's <laughs> today I've got a real fascination with sperm whales. So I just think they're incredible. I think the fact that they're they're just in like incredible predators and so elusive. Oh, you've got a chest! Oh my god! Oh my god! It was my dad's? I have no idea. It's ancient, but uh, wow. Yeah. Oh, oh my word. How <laughs> amazing. And they're specialized for their prey, which is squid. So yeah, just incredible. And I just love that. Yeah, they are colossal. Like their head is like a third of the like a third of their and body. Their mouth is so weird. Isn't yeah, the mouth is so weird. Also, they're just like feeding ecology. Absolutely blows my mind. They just you know they rarely hanging out in the shallows, and then they disappear to the deep ocean where they Those use sonar. Squid. To hunt giant squid in the dark, like and they have battles, got scars on their yeah. skin, and then they come back and sleep upright, like you know, kind of just like torpedoes, just like hanging. I just think they're fascinating. But mm -hmm. another big love of mine, and this comes from when I spent a lot of time on coral reefs diving in the Red Sea, is a fish called the harle harlequin filefish. And oh, I know, yes. Now I love them because they've got a fused jaw and also they're just the funkiest colors. So they're like yellow with blue spots. And the way they kind of like flutter around is like a bumblebee going around to different um, corals and they yeah. eat the polyps. And the best bit about it is that they take on the smell of the coral to hide themselves from predators. Like how cool is that? It's just brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and they look like they're sort of like these little swarms of bees kind of like flying yeah, around. No, the yeah, good choice. Good choice, them. Yeah. Um, before I get my final question, somebody's just put, um, uh, Alison has said, I have a daughter choosing her uni. Mm -hmm. Which ones in the UK do you rate? Because you were just talking about. Yeah, so um, I would really I rate Exeter University. Um, mm. I'd say that they are top, top. Um, if I could go back, I'd go back to, <laughs> I'd go to Exeter. No offence to UE, you're a great uni, <laughs> but it's, I would go back to Exeter. 
Um, also, I'd say Edinburgh University, uh, another fantastic university. So um, the founder of Blue Ventures, Al Harris, he went there. Um, and also some other incredible people like Max Bayo, who works for Mission Blue as their um, policy advocate. He's also a great person that went to Edinburgh. Um, where else would I rate? We've got Southampton, Plymouth, That's all fantastic. From, yeah. Woo! Southampton, Plymouth, really Plymouth, good yeah. marine centres, really good places to go. So I would say they're probably my top, although Aberdeen University also has some good ones. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd go to Exeter. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole's saying Edinburgh Pride. Woo! Or Banger, actually. In banger. I was How about to say Banger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Banger, Banger is a very good yeah, one too. I've had friends who went to Newcastle as well and York. Mm, yeah. And, yeah same so there's lots of options, but yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, my final question. Your uh, most unforgettable moment in the sea. I'm guessing you've had a few, so I'm going to force you to pick. Oh, God. Just to make God. us all totally jealous. Well, okay. So um, last summer, I went up to Scotland. Um, and the reason I'm choosing this one is because I think it's quite often easy to you know get excited about all these incredible experiences that you can have elsewhere but in the uk you yes. can have the most amazing experiences and i went up to nicely nicely tied yeah, in tied in <laughs> saltwater britain check it out um, <laughs> i went and snorkeled with basking sharks and how cool it was just this incredible. Is basking shark scotland Basking Shark Scotland and I'm actually running a trip which we have a double room still available on at the end of this month so if anyone's interested I can just say to people I mean I did yeah. it two years ago three years ago something like that yeah um we weren't overly lucky with the basking shark but we mm. got a basking shark we did get in the water yeah. with a basking shark so it it's just in yeah the weather can be very 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 temperamental yes. but we um, got it it's you got unbelievable it. i really recommend it to yeah. everybody so. and i think it's just a perfect example of how underrated uk seas are and you know the truth is is that we have the second largest fish in the ocean just swimming around up in it's scotland crazy, and right it's like, i know so yeah well, incredible we've got, I mean, we've got seahorses down yep. here and then on near dorset we've got um cuttlefish yeah like who would, i just love cuttlefish yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes they're incredible absolutely another yeah cephalopods in general yeah. i love them love them yeah so much so much good stuff here in the uk sorry to anybody yes. who's um not in the uk because you yeah. everyone talks but, but it doesn't get enough love i'm absolutely no. with that so it doesn't um uh Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Charlie. I think really do think we could chat all night. We um, could. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to everybody's questions. I'm sorry if we didn't get to everybody's, uh, but uh, we have now run out of time. Uh, but uh, thank you. If you if you, anybody has any other questions, we'll try and put them in the chat. We'll try and get to them after the event. Um, and uh, join us. We'll be doing more uh, next month. So keep an eye on our Facebook page here. If you want to have more interviews, go to uh, wiseoceans.com and head to our job board go down through the menus there you'll find our interview with wise oceans there's 170 uh interviews to read packed full of advice wow. um and a couple of blogs that are uh, i've written that that pull out the advice there's like mm -hmm. 15 ways to stand out um uh, some of the ways we've talked about today as well because as we've talked about it's very competitive mm -hmm. so yes Brilliant. Well, we wish you could please everybody check out Saltwater Britain. It sounds like a fantastic um, uh, opportunity to explore the, the just just so brilliant waters we've got here yes. in the UK yeah. and a little bit um, underloved, I think. <laughs> so, um, uh, but thank you very much for Charlie and we'll say goodbye to everybody. So thank you. Farewell. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us.